Hello, welcome folks. This month in JDC Diabetes Gems video, we are going to have a discussion on type 1 diabetes. If you have type 1 diabetes or if you know somebody with type 1 diabetes, it is worth watching this video. Type 1 diabetes is a difficult to treat variant of diabetes. It is a little bit different from other types of commonly occurring diabetes. Don't worry. It is difficult to treat but it is possible to treat type 1 diabetes nowadays. Type 1 diabetes usually occur in young children. In India, the average age of diagnosis is around 6 or 7 years of age. When you diagnose diabetes in a young child, naturally the parents are disappointed, they are upset, they initially will deny the diagnosis of diabetes and even the educated lot will try to get them treated with some unscientific, unproven therapies which should never actually happen. Type 1 diabetes is different because <clears throat> in type 1 diabetes the pancreatic beta cells which produce insulin gets totally distracted. In the commonly occurring type 2 diabetes the beta cell destruction is not the one to start with. It may take years and years, still there will be some residual function remaining. In the absence of beta cells producing insulin, patients require supplementation with the insulin to sustain life. <clears throat> Let us see how insulin is produced by a normal pancreas. In a normal human pancreas, there is a background secretion of insulin which happens throughout the day, throughout the night and even before eating food. And in response to each meal, let it be breakfast, lunch or dinner or snacks in between, in response to the carbohydrate content, there is a proportionate secretion of insulin. There is no fixed amount of insulin to be secreted. It depends on the amount of carbohydrate in the meal and the amount of glucose which is there in the bloodstream. In type 1 diabetes, since there is an almost total disappearance of insulin from the body, the entire insulin has to come from outside. And there are various insulin preparations available. There are different methods of administering insulin with different devices. Some of the examples will be administering a 30 by 70 insulin like a Mixtan or a Novolog, a Novomix two to three times daily before food. One step ahead, a better regimen will be to have a long-acting insulin like Levimer or Lantus once daily. And three or more shots of a rapid acting insulin like Nova Rapid that is Aspart or Epidra that is Glulysin just before food. And in the rare instance of children eating food which cannot be calculated before administration of insulin, you may plan administering the rapid acting insulins immediately after food also. The ideal methodology or device for administering insulin in type 1 diabetes kids undoubtedly will be the use of insulin pumps. The mechanism is called continuous subcutaneous insulin infusion. And now with insulin pumps we are searching for an artificial pancreas. Insulin pumps are in fact artificial pancreas. Instead of 
three or four injections per day with the help of an insulin pump. In response to the carbohydrate in the meal, the children or their parents can decide on eight or ten or even more times of insulin delivery at the heat of a button in the pump or in the remote device. And in the artificial pancreas, which we are going to have very soon in clinical practice in the open market, we will have an external algorithm which will help automatically calculate the dose of insulin and deliver it in combination with the insulin pump and a sensor-like device. I know so many of my patients with type 1 diabetes and their kids totally getting upset because of the fluctuating blood sugar values. It is like a mad man driving a car. The blood sugars are crazy. It will be 40 milligram before the food and it can be 300 milligram after the food. And during the sleep, for no reason, the blood sugars can come down and there can be a serious hyperglycemic episode. And I agree that it is difficult to manage a type 1 diabetes child. And this is mainly because of inadequacies in the treatment, in the selection of regimen, and it is absolutely important that the patient or the caretakers or the parents should be very much sincere and committed in learning the mathematics of how to calculate the dose of insulin, how to decide on the dose of uh, bolus, the correction doses, etc., etc. And there are so many new things uh, which are available like the insulin sensitivity factor, the carb factor, and all these mathematics in combination with the newer insulin analogs, which help, which will invariably help the patients reach the tablets of therapy and can sustain near normal blood sugars throughout the life. So don't be disappointed. It is possible to pre type 1 diabetes. And don't just go by the SP1C values. It can be wrong. In the presence of huge fluctuating blood sugars, you can have a normal A1C. So use glucometers very frequently. If you have a diabetes team working with you in your diabetes care center, discuss with dietitians, diabetes educators, perform continuous glucose monitoring periodically. It is amazing. It is very, very helpful in modifying the dosages of drugs in deciding the time of exercise, the type of exercise, etc., etc. Type 1 diabetes, of course, is a difficult to treat diabetes. But handle type 1 diabetes with care and common sense. Then only you will succeed. Until next time, goodbye from JDC Diabetes Team from Trivandrum, India.